Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your commands only be ran within a specific channel. So within this video, I'm going to be using a command-based system that I wrote in a previous video, a link to a video where I wrote that command system as well as a link to the GitHub repository we found in the video description. Now, if you have your own command system, you can follow along if you understand the concepts, so I'll try and explain those as clearly as possible. Now, a real quick note before we get started is if you need help with anything, please leave a comment down below or ask in the Warn Off Keys Discord, which a link can be found down below as well. If you comment on any of those places, I'll be sure to help you out as soon as I can. So with that said, let's get started. So here I'm inside my commands directory, and we see we have this very basic add.js file right here. This is essentially just going to add two numbers. And so we can see that in action real quick, if I run add 10 and 5, but let's say we want this to only be ran within channels called math. So going into my Discord, we have this tutorial channel here and we have this math channel. So I want it so my add command cannot be ran on anything that aside from the actual channel called math. So to do that, first let's specify that within our command configuration here. After the cooldown, I'm going to say required channel, and this is going to be a string called math, and then I can save this. And now we have to actually listen for that string whenever this command is ran, and we do that within our command base file over here. Now within here, if I scroll down, you see that we are destructuring a bunch of different properties of the command options object here. And this is all the information that we have for each command, as you see right here. So we can also deconstruct the required channel property from this object. So after the cooldown, I'm going to say required channel, and this by default will be an empty string. Now we can go ahead and actually use this. So scrolling down, after we see this comment here that says a command has been ran, at this stage, we know that we're actually running a command. Now we have some other checks here, such as permission checks and role checks and a few other things going down here. However, I'm going to start right here and I'm going to see if the channel that this message is being sent in or the command is being sent in rather, is going to be having the same exact name as the required channel. So to do that, we need access to the channel. And channel is going to be a property of the message object. So similarly to what we're doing over here on line 89, we can deconstruct the channel property. Now we have access to the channel. Now back over here on line 101, I'm going to add a comment. This will say, ensure we are in the right channel. And then here we're going to have a very simple if statement. We're going to say if required channel, which is going to be the name of the required channel. In this example, that is math. So if this is not exactly equal to channel.name. If this is the case, then we're going to complain to the user and tell them to use the proper channel. However, we want to actually mention what channel they need to use in a clickable format. So for example, if I go into the math channel and I say dollar sign tutorial, I can actually click on this and it sends me to that channel. This is what we want for our users so it's more convenient for them. So to do that, the syntax is going to be less than sign, hash symbol, the channel ID, and then a greater than sign. So keep that in mind with moving forward. But we don't actually have the channel ID at this point. We have access to a channel object here, but this is the channel that they typed in, and this is not the required channel that we want. So we actually need to fetch all of the channels within the specific guild, and then find one that matches the name we want, and then get the ID of the returned channel. This is actually fairly simple. We can make a constant here. This will be called found channel. And this is going to be equal to guild.channels.cache.find. Now find is going to be a function that is essentially going to loop through all of the actual channels, in this case at least, and it's going to run a callback function amongst each individual channel. So that callback function will look like this. We're going to have one argument, which is going to be our channel, and then we're going to have our function here. Now, if we return something, that means that that is going to be what is immediately returned into found channel. And if it's not something we want, then we are going to actually return any type of falsy value, such as null or false or something like that. And that's going to essentially be ignored. So to demonstrate this, we can actually return channel.name is exactly equal to required channel. Now with this said, after this, I can actually console log. I can say name will be found channel.name. And then I can say console log ID will be found channel dot ID. So now in the actual console logs, we're going to see the actual information that we can actually confirm 
when it comes to our math channel in this case. Now we also want to make sure that we return because we don't want to continue down with code execution and actually run the command. So from here, we can save the file. I can navigate into my console and I can run my bot with node index.js. So going into discord under our math, I can then say add five and 10. And this should work as expected because we are within a channel called math. However, if I go into tutorial and I try adding five and 10 here, nothing actually happens. And we see within our console, our ID right here is going to be this ID here. So to double check that this is correct, we can right click on the math channel and we can go to copy ID. And if you don't see this, you have to enable developer mode within your discord account. Now, if I paste this in here to check it, we see it starts with seven, three and ends with zero two. So it's this one, seven, three and zero two. So this is the same exact channel ID. So that means that now that we have that, we can actually tag the message with the actual channel so they can click on it. So going back to our code, we see our ID is found channel.id. So I'm going to remember that. And remember, jumping back, our syntax to actually tag a channel is this. So I can then say message.reply, and we're going to use backticks to create a template literal here. And from here, we're going to say, you can only run this command inside of and then we have to actually enter in our less than sign, our hash symbol, and then the greater than sign. But inside of here, in between the hash symbol and the greater than sign, we need to insert in the ID. Because we're using a template literal, we can insert it with this syntax. So found channel.id. And now we can get rid of our console logs. And if I were to run this and restart the bot, we can now go back into Discord. And within our tutorial, I can try adding 5 and 10 again. It's going to say you can only run this command inside of hashtag math. So if I click on this, it's going to move me into the channel. Now within here, of course, I can run my command just like normal. And so this is how you're going to make it so your commands can only be ran within a specific type of channel. In this case, we're checking to see if that type of channel is equal to the name of math. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.